Weather high of plus four. I'm Victoria Arsenault. This is Toronto's breaking news, traffic, and weather. In depth radio, News Talk 10 and 10. Your next update at 145. You're listening to Saturday with Ted on News Talk 1010. When I'm away from you, it's all that I can do to sit and concentrate. I can hardly wait. And when I feel like this, you're everything I miss. I need you every day. I'm so far away. to the program that's uh dave thompson with bent wood rocker good day sir how are you fine ted how are you i'm reading i'm very well thank you i'm, I'm reading uh, through the history of the band started back in uh, 1977 as a studio project that's true wow. yeah that's how it got going we had all uh been in bands you know since we were teenagers in high school but it'd been you know you're typically you learn a bunch of covers and you go play um, but over the years, these guys had, a couple of the guys had become quite good songwriters and they had all these songs and we thought, okay, well, let's switch it up and, uh, do like a Phil Collins or a Toto or Steely Dan or one of those kind of bands, you know, mm-hmm. where you're just a, you're a studio band. Right. And, and you it, hope you and, get a hit record. And, and so what has happened in, in the last 41 years? <laughs> Well, as, here, 41? there was a great comment on uh, a CBC uh, article about us uh, that's, that indicated or expressed the view that we had an enviable knack for obscurity. <laughs> Isn't that great? Said, you found it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Backhanded so com- I don't compliment know. if I've ever heard one. I, I guess the best way to put uh, it, Ted, is that at some point we made a conscious decision when we you know, got these couple albums out that, uh, you know, we, we weren't going to risk, uh, cause we had, we had families and, and, uh, kind of settled lives, I guess, outside the band. And maybe that, uh, if we just headed out and did a worldwide tour for a year, you know, things would not be the same at home. So we just kept putting out the records and hope for the best. And but we kept together. Steely Dan, for the longest period of time, you mentioned their names. Steely Dan, for the longest period of time, was strictly a studio band as well. Yeah. They never, they never um, performed live. That's true. And actually how it turned out that we started actually playing was uh, a local promoter heard of this project that we had with this album, our very first album, and uh, decided he uh, wanted to get us to play. So it's the first time we've actually been paid in advance, Ted, <laughs> to play a job. Did you know what to do with the money? Well, that's a very bad idea, right, Bill? You should never pay musicians in advance. But... Yeah, right. The gig's over. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That was quick. So we actually uh, had yeah. to uh, uh, learn the songs. And as Bill knows, I mean, when you record these things, you don't do them all at once together. So when they're the finished product, you actually have to go back and learn them and figure out what parts you're going to do. This was the funniest thing about the Rolling Stones tour from about five years ago. They go back out on tour again, and Keith Richards has to relearn all his guitar parts. I read that, too. And I'm at the concert, right? (laughs) Who's playing the guitar parts? Ron Wood. Because he knew all the guitar parts, and so Keith was still fumbling around trying to remember, you know, like, uh, start it up. 
Yeah. You, could, you could tell around the station until he kind of remembered the parts. Well, they, and they rehearsed quite a bit beforehand. But, you know, even though you're in a band, you play these songs. If you don't play them for like a year or so, you don't remember the parts. I it's mean, true. You have to get together. No, I was going to ask you, now, what region of Ontario do you all work out of? Okay, well, uh, as I was saying earlier, three of the guys uh, live in Belleville. And then Barry, the guitar player, lives in Peterborough. And I live in a town called Brighton, which is just... Uh, on the 401 near Trenton, uh, CFB Trenton. So you play so uh, all outside of the of Toronto. And yeah. You, you know, th there's a whole other world of music scene going on outside of here where people tour and play from community to community. That's true. Yeah. Now you, you, so we, you've got three CDs here. Yeah. How, how you like how they're laid out? <clears throat> well, they're laid out one, two, and three. No, no. Lay it down, and then you'll see how they tie together. Yeah, because it, it becomes one picture. Yeah, it does. That's Put right. one down there, and it includes <laughs> right. a second that a third musician... And the <laughs> third one you lay down there and it includes all five. And the fourth one has the manager. <clears throat> <laughs> so you, you, how many so many songs on each CD here? Well, yeah, so there's like 17 yeah. uh, songs, uh, Ted. And and basically what happened was, uh, as, as Bill knows, you know, your typical CD probably has 11 or 12 mm -hmm. songs on. So since we didn't want to ditch anything, we thought, okay, well, let's, let's make one uh, disc that just kind of has all the slow songs i guess you would say and once we did that we thought well why don't we just split the rest up on two and that's how it came to pass but you're releasing them simultaneously yes it's one it's one collection shall we say wouldn't it have been easier just to put like put it in into one sleeve true but the fact of the matter is that today for the most part people are not necessarily buying physical product it's right. nice to have but people buy their music off the internet right spotify and itunes and they download and they it's kind of back to the singles days wouldn't you say bill like <clears throat> the days of singles when people just have a yeah of songs. And, and yet every, every every band and every musician that plays uh, sells cds at their merch table true so that's why you you have to have physical product that's if you're yeah. touring yeah. yeah yeah if you're touring and just you know but well, i think not even touring just if you're playing <clears throat> gigs and you know here and there yeah but it's still you're not going to sell many you know, uh, you know, I was talking to Terry Wilkins, who plays right across the street here at the Rex, right? Now, since he can play every Saturday there, and he's been there for two years, and they play for three hours there, they can sell CDs. Because he's in place in a place where the room is filled all the time, right? Sure. So he can sell his CDs. Unless you're in a place where you can, people know you and everything, people will buy your CDs. It's not like it was 10 years ago where they just bought everything, you know? People just go, oh, yeah, I can. But you go, you got the, the, the younger bands, and they go in, and they play, and, and they'll have like three or four bands on the bill, and every one of them has a table set up with T-shirts. That's right. Pins and CDs. True. That's right. And that's kind of standard. Uh, <clears throat> so that's why you have to have the physical product when you're out playing, because mm -hmm. people pretty much expect. And if they like the band, you know, if you didn't have uh, a CD, they'd be wondering why. You know, can I get one? Where Where is it? How do I get it? Yeah. So, yeah. Or albums. True. You have vinyls coming back. Yes. Our first, you know, obviously first releases were on, on vinyl, LPs. Um. And uh, there are still some floating around out there. In fact, one of our roadies from the early days located a box, an open box of our first album in his garage just recently. You know, you can, <laughs> if you sold that, you didn't, wouldn't have to work next year. <laughs> How you, you should go and say, shit, sell those. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, well, we, we sort of, you know, parceled them out very carefully yeah. to, yeah, yeah, preferred customers. So yeah. wh wh where can the folks see you guys playing anytime soon? Well, we're sort of in the process now, Ted, of lining up the uh, the summer lineup. So we'll be in and around uh, the uh, sort of Belleville, Kingston area, Peterborough, um, over the course of the summer months. And it'll all be on the Bentwood Rocker website. People can uh, check it out. So it's bentwoodrocker.com, something yes. like that? Mm-hmm. That's it. Thompson, thanks for coming in. Thank you. I appreciate it. Nice to be here. Yeah, like, man. I feel like you're here three times now.